Hey, I'm Carbo Brother. I'm Chris Nelson, president of Carbo. Really excited to introduce a new Ruger LCP-1 flat trigger for your Ruger LCP-1 only. LCP-2, if you guys want it, we'll make it, just request it. But this new flat trigger, 6061 aircraft grade aluminum, it'll work for the LCP-1 only. But really love this new profile, love what we're able to achieve here. Now it does have a slight curve on the bottom. This was as flat as we could go to keep consistent finger placement. You know, with this all time double action trigger pull, you wanna make sure that you've got something to give yourself a little bit of purchase to keep from riding up on that flat trigger. So really impressed with it, love the profile, made it wider as well. So it feels so much better, feels so much lighter rather than that little pirate hook of a trigger that's on the LCP-1. Really love what we could do with this. Impressed with it. I'm excited to hear what you guys think about it. Gonna go ahead and demo everything we've got for the Ruger LCP-1. This could be an all-in-one bundle. If you guys wanted a bundle option, we'll certainly do it. Really happy we finally did this trigger. You know, we have the spring kit, which has been a big hit, and a lot of the other components, but really was missing one thing, and it's definitely that trigger. I mean, I'm so happy to have those little plastic sharp curve triggers out of every one of the LCP ones we have here. I mean, once you go with this, you're not going back. I'm excited about it. If you're gonna do the spring kit, you gotta do the trigger too. It's like those two items at least have to go together and you're gonna have a night and day effect and I love that. And I get super excited about, you know, hearing that feedback from you guys, man. This thing feels great. So in this video, this gun, this is brand, relatively brand new, shot a couple times. Six and three quarters down to four and a quarter is what we got for a reduction. I've seen more than that, but it depends too on how many rounds you had through it, how new is it, brand new out of the box, never been shot, might not be as light. So I'm excited to see what kind of results, what you guys think about the new flat trigger, really happy about it. Let's get on our tabletop, show you, put this baby in. All right guys, so here's a good up close comparison. You can see we've got the new flat trigger up here in both of these LCPs. So you've got the red anodized option, the black anodized option. Really love what we we're able to do with these triggers. I mean, night and day. Before I get into it, let's go ahead and just take this opportunity together. We'll check our firearms, make sure they're clear. Chamber, bolt face, magazine well. This little guy is clear. Go down the whole line here, looking good. All right, nice. So all clear. Let's go ahead and start playing with these guys. So you can see, really love this profile of the trigger. Now, it is a flat trigger with a slight curve at the end. On these all-time double action pistols, you've gotta have something to keep consistent finger placement. And maybe that was what the initial intent was here, but man, this uh, pirate hook style trigger, you're seeing a lot less of this coming from the factory on a lot of the newer production guns. You know, they're getting the hint that guys would like something a little more user friendly. You know, you get a nice lighter feeling trigger because you get lower naturally on the trigger. You got more leverage here down on the bottom of the trigger as opposed to way up high. Look at that. It just kind of seats your finger in real high on that trigger. And unfortunately, these small little frames you can't just get the tip like you would if you're shooting a full-size frame pistol where you can kind of feel that consistent pull. You kind of got like this crazy little, you know, trigger pull. You got your finger almost hooked all the way around it. And with that deep curve, it's even you know, more exaggerated. You're just kind of stuck. Everything about this gun, it's a small concealed carry pistol, which is nice, but then they got a small little hook-shaped curve trigger and it's plastic and it's just not what it could be. So left a lot to be desired. You guys requested that we did this. You know, the spring kit has been just an amazing hit and everybody's using it and loving it in a nice light trigger, but the complaints were then, well, the trigger isn't that good. I mean, it's lighter, but I still have a lot of pre-travel, over-travel, this is the solution. So we've got that nice adjustment. You can see those set screws up here. So that your pre-travel and your over-travel right here. And I love how you can get lower and this blade is wider. So the flat trigger option is wider, slightly longer than the factory option. I mean, it puts you in a good position to get a nice, smooth, consistent trigger pull. So you can see where your finger ends up in comparison. Now it's a subtle difference. Not everybody's gonna wanna do this kind of thing to their pistol, but look how far negative you are, all right? If we said this vertical line, imaginary line was zero, look how far negative you are in comparison to the flat trigger. So it puts you in a much better position for that reset and that next pull. 
as opposed to this. And even on the front end, you gotta get way up in there and hook your finger on that little baby curve. Here it's much more forgiving, easier to find. Really excited about it. I can go on for days, yakety yakety. Let's get into it. Parts needed for this build, the Ruger LCP-1 flat trigger. You got the options of red anodizing or black anodizing, so take your pick, we got both. And then this will be your all-in-one bundle for the LCP-1. Now some of these items will work for the LCP-2, like these two items will, but not all of them are compatible. The trigger, specifically just the LCP-1. This is your 316 stainless steel guide rod for the Ruger LCP-1, LCP-2. This is your Ruger LCP-1, LCP-2 extra power mag release spring. Love this thing. One of you guys suggested this and it has been a great success. A lot of guys have seen tremendous improvement. Anybody using this pistol for concealed carry, which majority of us are, if that mag release button gets hit accidentally, the mag comes out just enough, you're gonna have a catastrophic failure. So it's a good piece of insurance to ensure that we don't have any sort of accidental mag drop while it's holstered or in your pocket or whatever. Moving on, the Ruger LCP-1 trigger spring kit. We have an LCP-2 kit option as well. And your Ruger LCP-1 heavy duty takedown pin, A311 stress proof carbon steel, won't break like the factory one notoriously will. Also got an LCP-2 option as well. So we've got LCP-1 and 2 options for these four items. Now for the trigger, it's LCP-1 only, but if you guys want an LCP-2 trigger, Hey, let us know. I mean, we operate by request. We get a ton of requests from LCP2 trigger, we'll make it. Tools needed for this build, needle nose pliers, regular tip flathead screwdriver, micro tip flathead screwdriver, 1 inch punch, 3 seconds inch punch, 1 8 inch punch, bench block, hammer. This is a universal installation tool that we carry. Really handy, definitely for the extra power mag release spring that we're gonna put in here. And then blue 242 Loctite. Now this is a must, you need to put some kind of Loctite on those set screws. So there's a pre-travel, post-travel set screw on that trigger, we'll do that, you'll see in a minute. As always guys, make sure we're an iPro. All right, so this is the all bone stock Ruger LCP-1. And like I said in the beginning, you know, this trigger will work for the LCP-1 only for now. If you guys want an LCP-2 option, we're definitely open to it. You just gotta request it, it's all by request. So bone stock, we're gonna replace everything that we need to, the trigger, the springs, the takedown pin, the guide rod, and the mag release spring. So feel this mag release spring before you replace it and kind of get an idea. I mean, it's super light. And if that thing gets bumped, mag falls out slightly, you go to draw, catastrophic malfunction, bad day. So it's good little insurance against this thing just getting bumped and then you've got issues. And you can see how it sticks out a little bit. So could be prone to getting bumped. You guys requested it, excellent idea, love it, and it works great. So we'll do a five pull average and you'll see it right here. So each incremental pull will be displayed here, the running total average here, number of pulls right here. So let's go ahead and get after it. Six pounds, 10.7 ounces. Six pounds, 12.7 ounces. Six pounds, 14.1 ounces. Six pounds, 13.5 ounces. Six pounds, 12.2 ounces. So you can see the running total here. So five pulls, the running average total is six pounds, 12.6 ounces. So six and three quarter pound trigger pull. And I've heard of guys having a higher trigger pull than that. And I guarantee a lot of it has to do with where your finger is gonna be placed naturally, high up on that trigger, which is not conducive to a lighter pull. So really exciting to see what kind of results you guys get, you know, with the flat trigger, the spring kit, the whole thing. All right, so we're gonna get started with a simple little field strip. So just take your micro tip flat head. You're gonna pop out that factory takedown pin. All right, snaps right out. You'll notice how thin the head on that factory pin is. And that's what notoriously breaks right there. So a lot of guys complained about that. Our A311 stress proof carbon seal replacement is a much beefier option, not gonna break on you. Put that baby aside, take the slide right off. And you can see you've got your guide rod and recoil spring assembly here. So we're gonna replace this little guide rod here with a 316 stainless steel option. We're gonna keep these recoil springs, but this little guy is gonna get swapped out. We'll lay them all side by side here in a minute. All right, barrel comes right up and out like that. So what we're gonna do is tap out this pin right here, and that's what holds in the firing pin. So it'll allow us to replace that firing pin spring. So we're gonna get our spring kit out, and we're gonna tap this baby out real quick first, three 30 seconds inch punch. You're just gonna tap it from the inside out, right through the top. 
So just get it up on your bench block there. A couple taps should do it. Now we are gonna to wanna to retain the tension on this firing pin. That little baby will go flying. So when we get close, you'll see me kinda of switch to that 1 8 inch punch. All right, pin's out. Now the punch is retaining the firing pin, so that's handy. Go ahead and stick in your 1 8 inch punch. Just kinda of compress against it so that you can remove your punch that's stuck in there. All right, we'll slowly let it out. You can see the curvature there on the firing pin. That's how it's captured and retained by that pin inside the slide. So we'll replicate that upon reassembly. Drop out our little firing pin, a couple taps. I know you're in there. Sometimes they'll get gunked up and there we go. So there's the factory firing pin spring right there. Pretty straightforward. So we'll save this bag. Try to be careful with it. At least you got five other bags if you tear this one up and I'm gonna rip up some of them. I only need one. All right, so here's your M-Carbo lighter trigger spring kit for your LCP-1. Trigger return spring here, your firing pin spring here, and your lighter hammer spring here. So great combination of springs to ensure you get good, reliable primer strikes. That's why we're doing a lighter firing pin spring with the lighter hammer spring, and this lighter trigger return spring giving you a nice smooth pull. So really excited about this. We're gonna set the lighter hammer and trigger return spring aside. Let's do a direct little swap on these firing pin springs. I mean, you can see there's a major difference there in how these springs look and how they compress. So let's go ahead and put the stock one. I'm gonna start a bag now and put the stock springs in that bag. All right, so we're gonna put a lighter firing pin spring in. All right, go ahead and put the firing pin through the hole there on the firing pin spring. So you see this notch, obviously we wanna have that facing towards the hole in the slide so it can get good capture retention. So we're gonna slide it right in to the hole on the slide there. And you're gonna to have to kinda of use your punch, 3 seconds inch punch, kinda of move it along, keep it in the right orientation, at least long enough to get our 3 seconds inch punch in that hole. You've gotta use that 3 seconds, all right? So push in the firing pin, drop in that 3 seconds inch punch, and it works beautifully. It's gonna hold it in place right where you want it. All right, now we can back it out a little bit, just enough to get that roll pin into the hole on the top of the slide. And you can use a little bit of grease, kind of hold it in place if you're having any trouble getting it to stand vertical, because it is at an angle. If you notice, when that punch is all the way through, you see that, isn't that crazy? So it goes in at a weird angle. So the good thing is, you know, the roll pins are fairly forgiving and with a little grease, it'll kind of stay in place. So I've got some here. I'm just gonna use it, you know, synthetic grease, PTFE. Just gonna kind of fill that hole with some grease, AKA gunsmith glue, and it does a nice job holding it. So good little things to <laughs> save you a few F-bombs. All right, and I like the plastic tip hammer, brass tip hammer, because it gives you options. And now make sure as you're tapping it, you know, you're letting that punch slide through. All right, starting to feed in. Now I'm gonna switch over to the plastic tip so I don't bang up the top of that slide. There you go, good. It'll drop right out. You definitely wanna double check and make sure your firing pin is captured and retained. All right, now we're gonna drive it the rest of the way home. I can just use my 1 8 inch punch, just kind of give it a couple taps to make sure it's good and seated. And then I can just use my plastic tip to make sure it's good and flush. That's what I love about the plastic tip, because you don't have to worry about scratching the crap out of your slide. All right, so we're good there. There's still a little more room down here, so if you're a little OCD like I am, take your little 3 seconds inch punch and try to get it a little bit recessed. You know, and these are roll pins, so you could use roll pin punches as well. You know, I try to at least do a demo with basic tools, and it's doable. I mean, unless you're gonna pull this baby apart like 25 times, then your roll pin's definitely gonna not hold up. All right, good, so I got it recessed right where I want it. Still plenty of retention down here. And let's just check our firing pin, make sure it moves freely, and it does. Perfect, you can see the little tip right there. There we go, awesome. So the slide is done. We'll go ahead and throw the barrel right in. Just kind of slides in and drops in like that. All right, let's grab our stainless steel guide rod, 316 stainless steel replacement. So you can see how they compare right there. A really nice replacement over that kind of generic metal guide rod from the factory. 
which I'm surprised it's actually at least metal. Most of them are doing plastic nowadays. It's a stainless steel guide rod, awesome. All right, put the slide aside. All right, good. So we're gonna move over to the frame now. All right, this one's pretty quick. Now to make things simpler, you wanna make sure your hammer's forward. So if it's cocked back right now, like that, you know, just put pressure on that hammer, pull the trigger, let it forward, just like so. It's gonna take a lot of that tension off that hammer spring. Three 30 seconds inch punch to remove that little cap on the bottom. So you're gonna push in and kind of pop it up like that. You can see there's just a little tab right there. So don't push too hard, it is plastic. And that's what covers, you know, the hammer spring, seat, the pin, all that. All right, so now all you have to do is take your pliers and pull up on that pin. Now notice how the hammer spring is in good vertical alignment. It's actually off to one side here. So it's off to the left side of the frame here. And you can see how it's all lined up, good vertical alignment. So you wouldn't want to have it over there. It'd be crooked, just not conducive to good operation. So now we just pull up on the pin and it's going to pop right out, just like that. We'll set that pin aside. All right, so the hammer spring is loose. Now we can go ahead and tap out these two pins on the frame and get that internal metal frame out and get some work done here. Let's take your 1 8 inch punch. And we're just going to tap out the rear pin first. So it's these two big plastic pins right here, here and here. You don't want to tap out this one. This is what holds the hammer seat, AKA the sear inside the frame. So we want to leave that alone. That's just going to be extra work for you. There's one. So these two pins are identical. So they're universal. And there's two. So now we just pull back on the trigger and push up on the slide stop. And as we're pulling up and out, you're going to want to pinch the front here. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. So I kind of got my fingers set up like this, triggers back, thumbs pushing up on that slide stop as I'm pulling it all up and out. And it may try to stick on you a little bit there. Just take your little micro tip, you know, kind of use that as an assist if you need to. There you go. Try to hold it together. All right, there's our metal frame right there. So you've got your takedown pin spring right here, slide stop, slide stop spring. All right, now this pin will fall through. Just be careful, it's smooth all the way through. That's your hammer hinge pin. Notice the hammer spring, the orientation. These loops are facing the rear of the frame. Very crucial. And then moving over here to the opposite side, you can see your trigger bar and the orientation. You can see that little tab underneath the hammer back here. All right, there's your trigger return spring and how it locates inside the trigger bar. There's a little notch cutout down here that holds that little bend in place on the trigger bar. And then there's a pin that goes through the trigger and captures through the loop on the inside of that trigger return spring. All right, and this is your trigger pivot here. So we're gonna take all that apart and it's easy for it to spring into a couple pieces here. We're gonna let our hammer hinge pin fall right through. You can see that's a smooth pin. It's metal compared to those plastic frame pins. Here's our hammer right here and our trigger, trigger return spring and the trigger pivot. So far so good. So all we have to do to get that trigger out is just tap that little pin right there on the bottom. A lot of these plastic triggers can break pretty easily when you remove that pin. So I think that's why we also got a lot of requests from guys, hey man, need a trigger. I hear ya. So tap that baby right through. Just use the 1 16th inch punch. That's a factory pin. We won't be using that again, but keep it anyway. You never know. And keep your plastic trigger too. All right, there's the beefy trigger return spring on these things, crazy. Here's the trigger pivot. Just gonna drop it right out. And there's the trigger. So the trigger pivot's gonna go in like that. That's the orientation. And you can see how you know, the holes would line up and that pin would go through. And that little pivot would be vertical, a little tab. And that's where the trigger bar connects to the trigger. And there's the frame stripped down to as far as we need to. All right, so now real quick, before we review all the parts from the aluminum metal frame that we just took apart, let's go over the plastic grip frame really quick. There's only a couple items left in there. Like I mentioned before, you know, this is the hammer catch, AKA sear. And upon reassembly, I point this out every time because we're gonna have to push it all the way forward as we drop in that aluminum frame. You'll see it, but that's exactly the motion right there. And you can see I've got the universal installation tool here. This is a must for this extra power mag release spring. So let me turn up the brightness here. So the factory mag release spring, you can see it right in there. You can see the orientation. 
doesn't take a whole lot to move that mag release and you can see it really doesn't take a whole lot of movement to drop that mag. That's fine if you're doing like some crazy tactical reload stuff, but a concealed carry pistol that's not likely the option. It's likely you got one mag, maybe a spare. We're not too worried about our mag change transitions and all that. We're more concerned about the mag falling out accidentally, which has been something a lot of guys had requested we fix. So take your needle nose pliers and we're going to pull right up and out on that mag release spring. So it just comes straight up and out and you can see the orientation it was in. So this straight leg is facing the right side of the frame. All right, so there's the button. So it's facing away from the button. We're gonna replicate that. So grab the extra power mag release spring. So you can see here they are side by side. So the M Carbo extra power mag release spring, thicker wire than the factory one, but also a little bit of a different shape. So you can see the geometry is improved, making it harder for it to wear out. And I think that's what's plagued a lot of guys is this factory spring is a simple little bend with a little 45 leg. And after time, that'll just wear out, lose its tension, rigidity, and before we know it, you know, mags are just falling out, no good. So we're gonna put the factory one aside. You can see with the M-Carbo spring, thicker wire diameter, and it's got some improved geometry to ensure that it's not just gonna simply wear out over time. I mean, that's a nice little bend there, adding some more strength and rigidity to that mag release. All right, so we're gonna take our spring, we're gonna drop it right in. So there's the button right there, crazy leg towards the button. So then you're gonna put the crazy leg in the hole. So you can see it right there. Crazy leg goes right in the hole. You gotta get your pliers out of there without it falling out. And you can use a little grease too. So if you're having a hard time getting that spring into the hole, put a little grease on the tip of that crazy leg and it'll kind of hold it in place. Take our universal insulation tool and you can see that straight leg right there. So we're gonna grab that straight leg, push it this direction and then back and it'll snap in behind that piece of the plastic frame. All right, so I got it caught right now. So I'm gonna push it towards the center and it's under some tension, so don't be surprised. You have to kind of get a little leverage and kind of get my finger closer down there towards it. Push towards the center and then snap it into place. This might take a couple little tries because it is a definite improvement. There you go. So it's kind of a push and then straight back. And once that baby's locked and located, I mean, you'll hear it. You just heard it snap right into place. And that's solid reinforcement against any sort of accidental mag release. And you can see it still doesn't take a whole lot to release, but it's considerably more than what it was. I mean, that's nice. I mean, we just want it to stay in the pistol. God forbid you need to use this thing and you have some kind of goofy catastrophic failure like that. So that's covered, installed. Let's go over the components in the frame. All right, so here are all the factory parts we just removed from the aluminum frame, left to right here. So we've got our hammer, hammer spring, a hammer hinge pin. This is the hammer seat pin here. It's got two little notches cut into it. This is the hammer seat cover, the trigger bar, the aluminum frame housing, the factory plastic trigger, the factory trigger return spring. This is the trigger pivot, the factory takedown pin, and the two plastic frame pins that are universal. So we're gonna swap out some of these parts. We don't need the plastic trigger, so we can go ahead and throw that in our bag of spare parts. And you can see these are accumulating pretty quickly here. Factory firing pin spring, factory mag release spring, the factory trigger pin, factory trigger, factory guide rod. What else can we throw in here? All right, we're gonna throw in the factory takedown pin. So let's get that little tiny head on that pin. Let's go ahead and open up our stress-proof carbon steel heavy-duty takedown pin. Do a quick side-by-side -side comparison here for you. So you can see the head on that pin is much thicker on the Carbo pin than the factory. This factory one's so thin, it's like, man, you almost could like bite that thing off. So we're gonna replace that, so that'll be a nice improvement. So we'll set that baby down, throw our factory one in the bag of spare parts. Now we can go ahead and replace this factory trigger return spring. And you can see how heavy that thing is. That is stiff. All right, let's grab the M-Carbo lighter trigger return spring. You can see there's quite a bit of difference here. So the M-Carbo one is right here. You can see how light that baby is. All right, we're keeping that. Kind of doing it a little methodical process here. Throwing our spare parts in the bag. We do have to swap out this hammer spring 
and there's a little bit to that. So we'll go ahead and we'll tap this pin out and we'll exchange it. And it's gonna stay in the same orientation just like this. So you can see your hammer spring, the loops are behind the strike face. So the strike face is right here. It'll be the worn portion. Nice and smooth, worn little indentations there. You can tell pretty quickly strike face, all right? That's from hitting the firing pin. We're gonna have those loops of the hammer spring facing away from the strike face. So you can see strike face up here, loops pointing away from it. So we're gonna do that exactly. So let's cut to that real quick, exchange that with the lighter hammer spring in the M-Carbo kit. All right, so we're gonna replace this factory heavy hammer spring here with the lighter hammer spring. Now a convenient little trick, you can see how that pin goes through both sides here. So if we tap out the pin on this side, it'll be this side right here. If you look at it in this orientation, looking at it with the strike face towards you, just tap this pin just enough, we'll leave it mostly captured, just enough to do a quick swap. You can see how those loops are facing the back of the hammer. I keep reiterating that because it's very important. Three 30 seconds inch punch, we're gonna tap right through, just enough. Kind of check our progress. All right, still a little bit more to go. I'm just trying to make sure I don't tap it all the way through. You definitely don't want to do that. If you do, it's not gonna be the end of the world, but just more work for you. There we go. Spring drops right out, throw in the lighter spring. Just like that, same orientation, right? Now we're gonna flip it over and kind of hold it like this. Found this to be a good little convenient trick too. If you kind of hold it with your thumb like this, it'll keep that loop in the right orientation and you can quickly tap that pin right through. Take your time with it, because if the pin doesn't capture that loop of the spring, you know, you gotta pull it all apart again. Just kind of hold it nice and tight. Check your progress as you go. Good, success. So we've got it there. It's at least captured. We do want to even it out a little bit. So we got some more depth right there that we can push that pin through. Just even it out both sides. Take our punch, 330 seconds inch punch. So good and evenly recess that pin on both sides. Strike face is right here. Loops are facing away from the strike face. Probably said that a million times, but it's important. All right, there we go. And obviously too, I mean, that long leg of the hammer spring is up there towards the hammer. I always love to make sure we stress those little points that easily get missed between disassembly and assembly. It happens all the time. So take your time with it and that's it. All right, now for the reassembly, we'll open up our flat trigger for the LCP-1, LCP-1 only, remember. I gotta reiterate a million times. And then we're gonna take our aluminum frame, the M-Carbo lighter trigger return spring, and our trigger pivot, and that'll get us going here for the reassembly. So this is the first step right here. So we'll go ahead and open up this new flat trigger. So we got the flat trigger here, 50 thousandths Allen key. We've got our 4140 steel pin, all right? That's the trigger pin, that's what's gonna locate it inside the trigger pivot. And then we've got two set screws, all right? We've got one that is an eighth of an inch long, a little short one, and then we've got one that's a quarter of an inch long. So these are 440 thread set screws, all right, to go in these holes for the pre-travel right up front and the post-travel or over-travel right in the back. So we'll get an opportunity to put those set screws in after we install the trigger. It's very important to make sure we get the pin in first. And I'm gonna review this really quick, just because, you know, if you don't wanna follow instructions, kinda of like all of us do, if you tap in the pin after you installed these set screws, say you put them in too far, well, you can see that Allen key through those threaded holes right there on the back and on the front. And you can see how that might pose a problem. So we wanna make sure we kind of do this in a little systematic process. So these turned out really nice. I am really happy and thrilled to see this finally come into fruition. Getting this internal feature, this little dome feature, it's easy to mold. Let's take a look at the plastic factory one. And you can see we actually changed some tiny little subtle features here. So, you know, we pitched this forward a little bit more. We did some things to make the trigger pull a little more conducive to what we're all looking for. You know, as shooters, there's certain things we expect. So we put a lot of time and attention to detail in this. Here's a good side-by-side -side comparison so you can see some of the thickness difference between the two. Nice, wide blade, you know, flat. Obviously, this is the backside, but you can see quite a bit of difference there. And if I stack it on top 
It might give you a little more perspective. And that's a good sizable amount of extra finger placement on that trigger. Everything's gonna be much more improved with this new flat trigger. Really excited to hear what you guys think about this. If you love the spring kit, I know you're gonna love this new flat trigger. Put a lot of time and attention detail into this. All right, so for the reassembly, it's gonna be really straightforward. So we insert the trigger right here. You can see that little cutout for the trigger pivot there. We drop in the trigger pivot right in the hole. It'll move freely. So it needs something to capture it to basically connect the trigger and the trigger pivot. So that's what this pin's for down here. Now, before we drop that pin in, and I do wanna mention this pin going inside that hole in the trigger, it will be a slight press fit. A little extra insurance to make sure that it's fully captured and retained and that there was no possibility of it ever just falling out. All right, so we'll go ahead and insert the trigger return spring, the lighter M carbo trigger return spring. And see that loop there, that little eyelet, you know, we're gonna capture that with a pin. All right, once we got the trigger return spring in there, we're gonna compress it. All right, we wanna make sure that it's fully seated. Wanna get that eyelet all the way in there. So we'll compress it, we're gonna rotate it up like this, and we're gonna go in through the backside of our 3.30 seconds inch Allen key. Go through that hole on the trigger. It's gonna be a good, tight fit. We wanna make sure we get everything in alignment. So we don't wanna tap in our pin, our trigger pin, just to find out we missed the eyelet on the trigger return spring. We have to tap it all out, risk damaging the trigger, lose that good press fit engagement and everything else. Now you could pull the pin out a couple times, you know, and you're not gonna completely lose that press fit engagement, but obviously if you're removing this a ton of times, the press fit engagement will be gone. Not that it's, you know, 100% necessary, but it's just one of those nice to haves. Needle nose pliers, grab that little pin and just kind of get it in the hole. All right, it'll slide right in for the most part. You can see what I'm doing. You know, I've got it on the table, but I'm kind of raising up on this frame as I'm tapping that pin through. Just makes it a little easier. All right, and you're gonna get to a point where sticking up about you know an eighth of an inch or so. Well, that's the press fit time, but just make sure, you know, pull out on that trigger return spring, if it comes out, you know, start over, but it should be captured and retained just like that with the leg pointing forward, because we're gonna rotate it around. It's gonna need to create some tension for that trigger bar. Grab our bench block. We'll go ahead and drive it home. So take your 1 8 inch punch, just center up on it, on the head of that pin, and give it a couple good taps until it's flush. All right, so there you go, good and flush. I mean, that's as flush as it's gonna get. I mean, it's got a good adequate clearance there. Awesome. All right, now we're gonna adjust the set screws. So now we can put in the set screws, make sure we get our good pre-travel, post-travel set up. So for this, it's kind of weird, you know, where do I put them? If you were to ask me off the top of my head, it'd be hard for me to remember exactly. Easiest way to tell is you can see that's where the pin went through right there. And it's a pretty thin wall. So that's where the smallest set screw is gonna go. So that little 1 8 inch long set screw is gonna go back here on the back. And on the front, we're gonna get the quarter inch length set screw. So these are both 440 threads. So it's not gonna be the end of the world. It's just not gonna work right if you put the long one in the back. So we'll take the long one first, put some blue 242 Loctite on there. All right, and we're gonna thread that into the front. And you know, everybody's gonna have a little bit of a slightly different adjustment so to start out, I like to have about three threads exposed. So you can see roughly right there, I've got about three. So one, two, three, maybe that's three and a half. That's more three right there. Any excess Loctite, you know, go ahead and wipe that off before it becomes permanent. You don't want your finish looking all weird. Getting closer to the end. This is most time consuming really. Just dialing in these set screws. And I definitely use a lot on this little guy. I mean, you don't have a whole lot of thread engagement back there, so it's not gonna be the end of the world. I swear, man, I always over-tighten stuff, use too much glue. If I can do this without messing it up, you guys can too. All right, so same deal. Now on this one, you know, you're gonna go about two and a half threads exposed. Like I said, there's not a whole lot of thread engagement back there. So you can see about two threads. Wipe away any excess Loctite. You know, give it some time at least a few hours. I mean, it says 24 hours for the Loctite to permanently set and cure, but at least a few hours. I mean, don't run out and start shooting it. Any vibration will back out. So we got our pre-travel, over-travel set. 
it's hard to tell right now, but you can see by the trigger pivot there, that trigger pivot isn't hitting the frame yet. So that's not a good thing. And what's controlling that is the front screw. So the front screw is controlling where it's hitting on the back, back screw is controlling where it's hitting on the front. So the back screw is fine, but that front screw is sticking out a little too far because you want that trigger pivot to hit that wall right there. And you'll be able to adjust it once it's back inside you know, the grip, but you might as well right now just fine tune it. So just go like half turn until it hits. There we go. And I can feel it hitting solid. Maybe that's more true to three threads now. It's a, a bit of a guessing game with this whole thing, but the most important thing is to pay attention to where the trigger pivot is. So if the trigger pivot can fully rotate as it's intended, you know, hitting the back here, hitting the front here, then we're good. So now we'll go ahead and we'll throw in the hammer. All right, it's gonna be like this. Remember, strike face is gonna be forward. Remember, these little loops are gonna be facing backward and that's just gonna drop right in. So it drops right into the channel there. All right, line up the holes between the frame and the hammer and that smooth metal pin, it's the only one that's gonna drop in. That's your hammer hinge pin. All right, drops right in. Have your finger on the other side just to catch it because it will just drop right through. Now we're gonna take the trigger bar in this orientation, see that little flat bend right there? Well, that's gonna go underneath the hammer. So just set it over the pin just like that, and then get the trigger bar hole to locate on that trigger pivot. You know, the big hole over top of that hammer hinge pin, and we got the little hole in the front on the trigger pivot. Keep your finger on the back side of that hammer hinge pin. Now we're gonna wind back that trigger return spring, that little leg, that little bend in the leg is gonna be captured right there. There's a cutout on the trigger bar right there. So wind it back, and it'll drop right in like that kind of pinch it together. I like to pinch it up here like this, and then we're gonna drop it right inside the plastic grip frame. So trigger drops in first, and then you'll notice there's a little cutout on the front on this side and on this side. It's gonna drop on the plastic features in the grip there. So we wanna get that lined up and get it to locate first. So I'm still pinching it, pushing down, forward. All right, as long as that's all lined up good, everything else will kind of hold together. Now don't compress it all the way yet. Leave a little space back here like that. And now we're gonna push the actual hammer catch, AKA the sear, forward all the way. So just push down your table like this with your micro tip, push that baby all the way, compress the metal frame and the plastic frame together like this, and then pull out your little micro tip and you should be good. You can see it right up here. So there's the hammer catch right there in front of the hammer. That's very important. If you don't get that, then it won't pass the function check. All right, still holding it together. Now we'll take the frame pins, plastic frame pins, universal. Get the back one in first. Get the front one. Okay, we're pretty much there. Now just make sure your hammer's forward. You know, if it's sitting back like this, it's just make it a little bit more difficult. So push it forward all the way if you can. Now take our hammer spring catch pin, drop it right in. It's got a notch on either side. Just remember we want to keep that spring, that loop on the left hand side here, left as we're looking at it. So now we're just going to grab that loop of the spring and then just pull it up and get it to drop right in that notch of the pin. Just like that. Everything's in good straight alignment down there and that's what we want to keep. All right, nice. All right, so our hammer seat cover, that's just going to pop right in, kind of goes like that. You can see the little dome portion towards the back of the grip. The little tab's gonna lock and locate in that hole on the grip. All right, so at this point, you know, it should function. Should be able to lock that hammer back and pull that trigger. Oh man, that is nice already. All right, so all we got left is to put the slide back on. Just lock that hammer back or push it back with the slide. Either one's fine. So we're gonna put our slide back on, and then our heavy duty takedown pin. Then just push back on the slide of hair so those holes line up. Now we'll take our heavy duty takedown pin. There's a smooth side, we'll just insert that on the bottom so it'll bypass that spring. Straight in, and then just rotate it and it'll lock right in place. Just like that. We are all set. That is nice. Put back together, got everything. Woo, that feels fantastic.
nice and light, really nice, comfortable trigger to pull. You owe this to yourself with this little, small, compact pistol. You know, you had to sacrifice a lot to get that concealment capability. Well, no need to sacrifice the trigger quality. You know, the pull and even the fit form function of the trigger. This thing is beautiful. I am really happy with this. Really proud to put her name on this thing. All right, guys, let's go ahead and see what kind of trigger pull reduction we got. That'll be, oh man. Let me know what you guys think of this thing. I'm excited. All right, so let's see what we get for a modified trigger pull reduction. Same deal, we'll do five pulls. This will be the running average down here, and this will be the number of pulls, and this will be each individual pull. Four pounds, eight ounces. Three pounds, 11.6 ounces. Four pounds, 4.1 ounces. Three pounds, 13.6 ounces. Four pounds, 6.2 ounces. So five pull average, four pounds, 2.3 ounces. So four and a quarter pound trigger pull from six and three quarters, not bad. Now this one hadn't had hardly any rounds through it at all. So after putting some rounds through it on these new springs, letting everything break in, could get another half pound reduction. So really love what we got here. And with this flat trigger, feels fantastic. I love this. I'm excited to see what you guys think about it. Really completes the whole package. Well, there you have it guys. Nearly a 40% trigger pull reduction on this Ruger LCP-1 in particular. Everybody's gonna get different results. How many rounds had through it? You know, when was it produced? Yada, yada, yada. It's never the same exact trigger pull reduction. What's most important though, is we got a 40% reduction off of what we started with and a nice flat trigger. I love this flat trigger. This really completes it. I almost want to make it to where it's like, you have to buy the trigger if you get the spring kit because it's that good. So I'm really excited about this. Love the way it feels, you know, and like I was saying earlier in the video, with these small compact pistols, you have to sacrifice quite a bit to get that concealability factor. And, you know, this very narrow frame really forces this kind of crazy grip that wraps around and almost forces your trigger finger all the way through like that. To have that sharp little pirate hook curve trigger in there, it just doesn't help. I mean, your finger's riding way up top. You can't get very low and, ah, oh man, that's so much better. You know, you can't just get the tip of your finger in there like you usually would on most standard size pistols. So you're kind of forced to have that really exaggerated wrap around the trigger. It's nice to have that wider blade and that flatter profile. I mean, it's so much more conducive to getting good, consistent rounds down range and repeatable. And that's what you gotta, you gotta have it. Hands down for accuracy, repeatability, and just being able to draw it and quickly find that trigger is another bonus too. You know, with that little sharp curved hook, you gotta like almost thread the needle. You gotta get your finger just right in there to get on the trigger. And under any sort of circumstances where adrenaline's rushing through and some panic and some chaos, it's gotta be just quick. It's gotta be just muscle memory. So I'm excited about this. I'm really happy we pulled this off. Can't wait to hear what you guys think about it. We got it in black, anodizing options, red anodizing options. For the longest time, we just followed the old Henry Ford model of black. You know, customer can have any color they want as long as it's black. So now we offer red. So enough requests for the red. So we better be seeing some red triggers going out the door. I'm loving it, man. And like I said, if you guys want a flat trigger option for the LCP2, definitely ready to make one. Just need that little extra encouragement. So you guys let us know in the comments, email, all that stuff. Looking forward to your feedback. Thank you, M. Carver Brother, for all your ideas and your support. As always, happy shooting.